In physics, the Coriolis force is an inertial or fictitious force that acts on objects that are in motion within a frame of reference that rotates with respect to an inertial frame. In a reference frame with clockwise rotation, the force acts to the left of the motion of the object. In one with anticlockwise or counterclockwise rotation, the force acts to the right. Deflection of an object due to the Coriolis force is called the Coriolis effect. Though recognized previously by others, the mathematical expression for the Coriolis force appeared in an 1835 paper by French scientist Gaspard Gustave de Coriolis, in connection with the theory of water wheels. Early in the 20th century, the term Coriolis force began to be used in connection with meteorology. Newton's laws of motion describe the motion of an object in an inertial non-accelerating frame of reference. When Newton's laws are transformed to a rotating frame of reference, the Coriolis and centrifugal accelerations appear. When applied to massive objects, the respective forces are proportional to the masses of them. The Coriolis force is proportional to the rotation rate and the centrifugal force is proportional to the square of the rotation rate. The Coriolis force acts in a direction perpendicular to the rotation axis and to the velocity of the body in the rotating frame and is proportional to the object's speed in the rotating frame, more precisely, to the component of its velocity that is perpendicular to the axis of rotation. The centrifugal force acts outwards in the radial direction and is proportional to the distance of the body from the axis of the rotating frame. These additional forces are termed inertial forces, fictitious forces or pseudo-forces. They allow the application of Newton's laws to a rotating system. They are correction factors that do not exist in a non-accelerating or inertial reference frame. A popular, non-technical usage of the term Coriolis effect. The rotating reference frame implied is almost always the Earth, because the Earth spins. Earth-bound observers need to account for the Coriolis force to correctly analyze the motion of objects. The Earth completes one rotation per day, so for motions of everyday objects the Coriolis force is usually quite small compared to other forces, its effects generally become noticeable only for motions occurring over large distances and long periods of time, such as large-scale movement of air in the atmosphere or water in the ocean. Such motions are constrained by the surface of the Earth, so only the horizontal component of the Coriolis force is generally important. This force causes moving objects on the surface of the Earth to be deflected to the right, with respect to the direction of travel, in the northern hemisphere and to the left in the southern hemisphere. The horizontal deflection effect is greater near the poles, since the effective rotation rate about a local vertical axis is largest there, and decreases to zero at the equator. Rather than flowing directly from areas of high pressure to low pressure, as they would in a non-rotating system, winds and currents tend to flow to the right of this direction north of the equator and to the left of this direction south of it. This effect is responsible for the rotation of large cyclones see Coriolis effects in meteorology. For an intuitive explanation of the origin of the Coriolis force, consider an object, constrained to follow the Earth's surface and moving northward in the northern hemisphere. Viewed from outer space, the object does not appear to go due north, but has an eastward motion it rotates around toward the right along with the surface of the Earth. The further north you go, the smaller the diameter of its parallel, the minimum distance from the surface point to the axis of rotation, which is in a plane orthogonal to the axis, and so the slower the eastward motion of its surface. As the object moves north, to higher latitudes, it has a tendency to maintain the eastward speed it started with, rather than slowing down to match the reduced eastward speed of local objects on the Earth's surface, so it veers east, i.e. to the right of its initial motion, though not obvious from this example, which considers northward motion, the horizontal deflection occurs equally for objects moving east or west, or any other direction, the theory that the effect influences draining water 
equator to rotate clockwise in the northern hemisphere and anti-clockwise in the southern hemisphere has been repeatedly disproven by modern day scientists. Topic: History Italian scientist Giovanni Battista Riccioli and his assistant Francesco Maria Grimaldi described the effect in connection with artillery in the 1651 Almagestum Novum, writing that rotation of the earth should cause a cannonball fired to the north to deflect to the east. In 1674 Claude François Milliet Decales described in his Cursus Seu Mundus Mathematicus how the rotation of the Earth should cause a deflection in the trajectories of both falling bodies and projectiles aimed toward one of the planet's poles. Riccioli, Grimaldi, and Decales all described the effect as part of an argument against the heliocentric system of Copernicus. In other words, they argued that the Earth's rotation should create the effect, and so failure to detect the effect was evidence for an immobile Earth. The Coriolis acceleration equation was derived by Euler in 1749 and the effect was described in the tidal equations of Pierre-Simon Laplace in 1778. Gaspard Gustave Coriolis published a paper in 1835 on the energy yield of machines with rotating parts, such as waterwheels. That paper considered the supplementary forces that are detected in a rotating frame of reference. Coriolis divided these supplementary forces into two categories. The second category contained a force that arises from the cross product of the angular velocity of a coordinate system and the projection of a particle's velocity into a plane perpendicular to the system's axis of rotation. Coriolis referred to this force as the compound centrifugal force. Due to its analogies with the centrifugal force already considered in Category 1. The effect was known in the early 20th century as the acceleration of Coriolis, and by 1920 as Coriolis force. In 1856, William Farrell proposed the existence of a circulation cell in the mid-latitudes with air being deflected by the Coriolis force to create the prevailing westerly winds. The understanding of the kinematics of how exactly the rotation of the Earth affects airflow was partial at first. Late in the 19th century, the full extent of the large-scale interaction of pressure gradient force and deflecting force that in the end causes air masses to move along isobars was understood. Topic. Formula In Newtonian mechanics, the equation of motion for an object in an inertial reference frame is F equals M A display style bold symbol F equals M bold symbol O where F display style bold symbol F is the vector sum of the physical forces acting on the object M display style M is the mass of the object and a display style bold symbol a is the acceleration of the object relative to the inertial reference frame transforming this equation to a reference frame about a fixed axis through the origin with rotation vector omega display style bold symbol omega having variable rotation rate the equation takes the form f minus m d omega d t times r minus 2 m omega times v minus m omega times Omega times R 
Display style bold symbol F M F R A C operator name D bold symbol Omega operator name D T times bold symbol R minus two meters bold symbol Omega times bold symbol V M bold symbol Omega times bold symbol Omega times bold symbol R equals M A Display style equals M bold symbol O where Omega Display style bold symbol Omega is the rotation vector with magnitude Omega Display style Omega of the rotating reference frame relative to the inertial frame F Display style bold symbol F is the vector sum of the physical forces acting on the object relative to the rotating reference frame v display style bold symbol v is the velocity relative to the rotating reference frame r display style bold symbol r is the position vector of the object relative to the rotating reference frame o Display style bold symbol A is the acceleration relative to the rotating reference frame. The fictitious forces as they are perceived in the rotating frame as additional forces that contribute to the apparent acceleration just like the real external forces. The fictitious force terms of the equation are, reading from left to right, Euler force minus m d omega d t times r display style m operator name d bold symbol omega operator name d t times bold symbol r coriolis force minus 2 m omega times V display style minus two meters bold symbol Omega times bold symbol V centrifugal force minus M Omega times Omega times R Display style M, bold symbol, Omega, times, bold symbol, Omega, times, bold symbol, R. Notice the Euler and centrifugal forces depend on the position vector. R. Display style, bold symbol, R. Of the object, while the Coriolis force depends on the object's velocity. V. Display style, bold symbol, V as measured in the rotating reference frame as expected for a non-rotating inertial frame of reference omega equals 0 display style bold symbol omega equals 0 the coriolis force and all other fictitious forces disappear the forces also disappear for zero mass m equals 0 display style m equals 0 as the coriolis force is proportional to a cross product of two vectors it is perpendicular to both vectors in this case the object's velocity and the frame's rotation vector it therefore follows that if the velocity is parallel to the rotation axis the coriolis force is 0 for example, on Earth, this situation occurs for a body on the equator moving north or south relative to Earth's surface. If the velocity is straight inward to the axis, the Coriolis force is in the direction of local rotation. For example, on Earth, this situation occurs for a body on the equator falling downward, as in the Deckhales illustration above, where the falling ball travels further to the east than does the tower. If the velocity is straight outward from the axis, the Coriolis force is against the direction of local rotation. 
In the tower example, a ball launched upward would move toward the west. If the velocity is in the direction of rotation, the Coriolis force is outward from the axis. For example, on Earth, this situation occurs for a body on the equator moving east relative to Earth's surface. It would move upward as seen by an observer on the surface. This effect, CEOTVO's effect below, was discussed by Galileo Galilei in 1632 and by Riccioli in 1651. If the velocity is against the direction of rotation, the Coriolis force is inward to the axis. On Earth, this situation occurs for a body on the equator moving west, which would deflect downward as seen by an observer. Topic. Causes The Coriolis force exists only when one uses a rotating reference frame. In the rotating frame it behaves exactly like a real force, that is to say, it causes acceleration and has real effects. However, the Coriolis force is a consequence of inertia, and is not attributable to an identifiable originating body, as is the case for electromagnetic or nuclear forces, for example. From an analytical viewpoint, to use Newton's second law in a rotating system, the Coriolis force is mathematically necessary, but it disappears in a non-accelerating, inertial frame of reference. For example, consider two children on opposite sides of a spinning roundabout, merry-go-round, who are throwing a ball to each other. From the children's point of view, this ball's path is curved sideways by the Coriolis force. Suppose the roundabout spins anticlockwise when viewed from above. From the thrower's perspective, the deflection is to the right. From the non-thrower's perspective, deflection is to the left. For a mathematical formulation see mathematical derivation of fictitious forces. In meteorology, a rotating frame, the Earth, with its Coriolis force provides a more natural framework for explanation of air movements than a non-rotating inertial frame without Coriolis forces. In long-range gunnery, site corrections for the Earth's rotation are based on the Coriolis force. These examples are described in more detail below. The acceleration entering the Coriolis force arises from two sources of change in velocity that result from rotation, the first is the change of the velocity of an object in time. The same velocity, in an inertial frame of reference where the normal laws of physics apply, is seen as different velocities at different times in a rotating frame of reference. The apparent acceleration is proportional to the angular velocity of the reference frame, the rate at which the coordinate axes change direction, and to the component of velocity of the object in a plane perpendicular to the axis of rotation. This gives a term minus omega times v display style bold symbol omega times bold symbol v. The minus sign arises from the traditional definition of the cross product right hand rule, and from the sign convention for angular velocity vectors. The second is the change of velocity in space. Different positions in a rotating frame of reference have different velocities, as seen from an inertial frame of reference. For an object to move in a straight line, it must accelerate so that its velocity changes from point to point by the same amount as the velocities of the frame of reference. The force is proportional to the angular velocity, which determines the relative speed of two different points in the rotating frame of reference, and to the component of the velocity of the object in a plane perpendicular to the axis of rotation, which determines how quickly it moves between those points. This also gives a term minus omega times v display style bold symbol omega times bold symbol v topic length scales and the rossby number 
The time, space and velocity scales are important in determining the importance of the Coriolis force. Whether rotation is important in a system can be determined by its Rossby number, which is the ratio of the velocity, u, of a system to the product of the Coriolis parameter. F equals 2 omega sin phi display style f equals 2 omega sin var phi and the length scale l of the motion r o equals u f l Display style R O equals F R A C U Florida. The Rossby number is the ratio of inertial to Coriolis forces. A small Rossby number indicates a system is strongly affected by Coriolis forces, and a large Rossby number indicates a system in which inertial forces dominate. For example, in tornadoes, the Rossby number is large, in low-pressure systems it is low, and in oceanic systems it is around 1. As a result, in tornadoes the Coriolis force is negligible, and balance is between pressure and centrifugal forces. In low-pressure systems, centrifugal force is negligible and balance is between Coriolis and pressure forces. In the oceans all three forces are comparable. An atmospheric system moving at U. Topic: 10 meters per second, 22 miles per hour, occupying a spatial distance of L. 1,000 kilometers, 621 miles, has a Rossby number of approximately 0.1. A baseball pitcher may throw the ball at you. Topic: 45 meters per second, 100 miles per hour, for a distance of L. 18.3 meters, 60 feet. The Rossby number in this case would be 32,000. Baseball players don't care about which hemisphere they're playing in. However, an unguided missile obeys exactly the same physics as a baseball, but can travel far enough and be in the air long enough to experience the effect of Coriolis force. Long-range shells in the northern hemisphere landed close to, but to the right of, where they were aimed until this was noted. Those fired in the southern hemisphere landed to the left. In fact, it was this effect that first got the attention of Coriolis himself. Topic: Simple cases. Topic: Cannon on turntable. The animation at the top of this article is a classic illustration of Coriolis force. Another visualization of the Coriolis and centrifugal forces is this animation clip. Given the radius r of the turntable in that animation, the rate of angular rotation ω, and the speed of the cannonball, assumed constant v, the correct angle θ to aim so as to hit the target at the edge of the turntable can be calculated. The inertial frame of reference provides one way to handle the question, calculate the time to interception, which is Tf. Topic. R, V. Then, the turntable revolves an angle omega Tf in this time. If the cannon is pointed an angle theta. Omega Tf equals omega R, V, then the cannonball arrives at the periphery at position number 3 at the same time as the target. No discussion of Coriolis force can arrive at this solution as simply, so the reason to treat this problem is to demonstrate Coriolis formalism in an easily visualized situation. Topic. Trajectory in the inertial frame 
The trajectory in the inertial frame, denoted A, is a straight line radial path at angle θ. The position of the cannonball in x, y coordinates at time t is r a t equals v t cos theta sin theta display style math bf r underscore a t equals vermont left cos theta sin theta right in the turntable frame, denoted b, the x-y axes rotate at angular rate omega, so the trajectory becomes r b t equals v t cos theta minus omega t sin theta minus omega t display style math bfr underscore b t equals vermont left cos theta omega t sin theta omega t right and three examples of this result are plotted in the figure topic accelerations Topic. Components of acceleration To determine the components of acceleration, a general expression is used from the article fictitious force A B equals A A minus 2 omega times V B minus Omega times Omega times R B minus D Omega D T times R B Display style Math BF L underscore B equals Math BF L underscore A two bold symbol Omega times Math BF V underscore B bold symbol Omega times left bold symbol Omega times Math BF R underscore B right FRAC D bold symbol Omega D T times Math BF R underscore B, in which the term in omega times v b is the Coriolis acceleration, and the term in omega times omega times r b is the centrifugal acceleration. The results are: let alpha equals theta minus omega t, omega times r b equals i j. K zero zero Omega T V cos alpha T V sin alpha zero equals Omega T V minus sin alpha cos alpha omega times omega times r b equals i j k 0 0 omega minus omega t v sin alpha omega t v cos alpha 
zero equals omega two T V minus cos alpha minus sin alpha display style begin aligned bold symbol omega times math BF R underscore B and equals begin V matrix bold symbol I and bold symbol J and bold symbol K zero and zero and omega T V cos alpha and T V sin alpha and zero and V matrix equals Omega T V left sin alpha cos alpha right bold symbol omega times left bold symbol omega times math B F R underscore B right and equals begin V matrix bold symbol I and bold symbol J and bold symbol K zero and zero and omega omega T V sin alpha and omega T V cos alpha and zero Zero end V matrix equals Omega carrot two T V left cos alpha sin alpha right end aligned. Topic Producing accelerations. Producing a centrifugal acceleration. A CFGL equals Omega. Two V T cos alpha sin alpha equals omega two R B T Display style Math BF L underscore text CFGL equals Omega carrot two Vermont left cos alpha sin alpha right equals Omega carrot two Math BF R underscore B T Also V B equals D R B T D T equals V cos alpha plus omega T V sin alpha V sin alpha minus Omega T V cos alpha zero Omega times V B equals I J K O O Omega V cos alpha plus V sin alpha minus Omega T V sin alpha Omega T V cos alpha zero. Display style begin aligned Math B F V underscore B equals F R A C D Math B F R underscore B T D T and equals V cos alpha plus Omega T V sin alpha V sin alpha Omega T V V cos alpha zero bold symbol omega times math BF V underscore B and equals begin V matrix bold symbol I and bold symbol J and bold symbol K zero and zero and omega V cos alpha plus and V sin alpha and quad omega T V sin alpha and quad omega T V cos alpha and zero and V matrix and aligned producing a Coriolis acceleration a core equals minus two minus omega V sin alpha minus omega T cos alpha omega V cos alpha plus omega T sin alpha equals two omega V sin alpha minus cos alpha minus two omega 2 R B T
Display style begin aligned math bf l underscore text core and equals minus two left omega v left sin alpha omega t cos alpha right omega v left cos alpha plus omega t sin alpha right right and equals two omega v left sin alpha cos alpha right minus two omega caret two math bf R underscore B T end aligned. These accelerations are shown in the diagrams for a particular example. It is seen that the Coriolis acceleration not only cancels the centrifugal acceleration, but together they provide a net centripetal, radially inward component of acceleration, that is, directed toward the center of rotation, ACPTL equals minus omega 2 RBT, display style, math BF, a underscore, mathem, CPTL equals omega carat 2, math BF, R underscore, BT and an additional component of acceleration perpendicular to rb t a c equals 2 omega v sin alpha minus cos alpha display style math bf l underscore c perp equals 2 omega v left sin alpha cos alpha right the centripetal Component of acceleration resembles that for circular motion at radius rb, while the perpendicular component is velocity dependent, increasing with the radial velocity v and directed to the right of the velocity. The situation could be described as a circular motion combined with an apparent Coriolis acceleration of 2 omega v. However, this is a rough labeling. A careful designation of the true centripetal force refers to a local reference frame that employs the directions normal and tangential to the path, not coordinates referred to the axis of rotation. These results also can be obtained directly by two time differentiations of Rb t. Agreement of the two approaches demonstrates that one could start from the general expression for fictitious acceleration above and derive the trajectories shown here. However, working from the acceleration to the trajectory is more complicated than the reverse procedure used here, which is made possible in this example by knowing the answer in advance. As a result of this analysis an important point appears, all the fictitious accelerations must be included to obtain the correct trajectory. In particular, besides the Coriolis acceleration, the centrifugal force plays an essential role. It is easy to get the impression from verbal discussions of the cannonball problem, which focus on displaying the Coriolis effect particularly, that the Coriolis force is the only factor that must be considered, but that is not so. A turntable for which the Coriolis force is the only factor is the parabolic turntable. A somewhat more complex situation is the idealized example of flight routes over long distances, where the centrifugal force of the path and aeronautical lift are countered by gravitational attraction. Topic. Tossed ball on a rotating carousel The figure illustrates a ball tossed from 12 o'clock o'clock toward the center of a counter-clockwise rotating carousel. On the left, the ball is seen by a stationary observer above the carousel, and the ball travels in a straight line to the center, while the ball thrower rotates counter-clockwise with the carousel. On the right the ball is seen by an observer rotating with the carousel, so the ball thrower appears to stay at 12 o'clock o'clock. The figure shows how the trajectory of the ball as seen by the rotating observer can be constructed. On the left, two arrows locate the ball relative to the ball thrower. One of these arrows is from the thrower to the center of the carousel, providing the ball thrower's line of sight, and the other points from the center of the carousel to the ball. This arrow gets shorter as the ball approaches the center. A shifted version of the two arrows is shown dotted. On the right is shown this same dotted pair of arrows, but now the pair are rigidly rotated so the arrow corresponding to the line of sight of the ball thrower toward the center of the carousel is aligned with 12 o'clock o'clock. 
The other arrow of the pair locates the ball relative to the center of the carousel, providing the position of the ball as seen by the rotating observer. By following this procedure for several positions, the trajectory in the rotating frame of reference is established as shown by the curved path in the right-hand panel. The ball travels in the air, and there is no net force upon it. To the stationary observer the ball follows a straight line path, so there is no problem squaring this trajectory with zero net force. However, the rotating observer sees a curved path. Kinematics insists that a force pushing to the right of the instantaneous direction of travel for a counter-clockwise rotation must be present to cause this curvature, so the rotating observer is forced to invoke a combination of centrifugal and Coriolis forces to provide the net force required to cause the curved trajectory. Topic. Bounced ball. The figure describes a more complex situation where the tossed ball on a turntable bounces off the edge of the carousel and then returns to the tosser, who catches the ball. The effect of Coriolis force on its trajectory is shown again as seen by two observers, an observer, referred to as the camera, that rotates with the carousel, and an inertial observer. The figure shows a bird's eye view based upon the same ball speed on forward and return paths. Within each circle, plotted dots show the same time points. In the left panel, from the camera's viewpoint at the center of rotation, the tosser smiley face and the rail both are at fixed locations, and the ball makes a very considerable arc on its travel toward the rail, and takes a more direct route on the way back. From the ball tosser's viewpoint, the ball seems to return more quickly than it went because the tosser is rotating toward the ball on the return flight. On the carousel, instead of tossing the ball straight at a rail to bounce back, the tosser must throw the ball toward the right of the target and the ball then seems to the camera to bear continuously to the left of its direction of travel to hit the rail left because the carousel is turning clockwise. The ball appears to bear to the left from direction of travel on both inward and return trajectories. The curved path demands this observer to recognize a leftward net force on the ball. This force is fictitious because it disappears for a stationary observer, as is discussed shortly. For some angles of launch, a path has portions where the trajectory is approximately radial, and Coriolis force is primarily responsible for the apparent deflection of the ball. Centrifugal force is radial from the center of rotation, and causes little deflection on these segments. When a path curves away from radial, however, centrifugal force contributes significantly to deflection. The ball's path through the air is straight when viewed by observers standing on the ground right panel. In the right panel stationary observer, the ball tosser smiley face is at 12 o'clock and the rail the ball bounces from is at position 1, 1. From the inertial viewer standpoint, positions 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3 are occupied in sequence. At position 2 the ball strikes the rail, and at position 3 the ball returns to the tosser. Straight line paths are followed because the ball is in free flight, so this observer requires that no net force is applied. Topic. Applied to the Earth The concept. Coriolis force is specially suitable for the description of motion of atmosphere i.e. winds over the surface of the earth the earth like all rotating celestial bodies has taken the shape of an oblate spheroid such that the gravitational force is slightly offset towards the earth axis as illustrated in the figure for a mass point at rest on the earth surface the horizontal component of the gravitation counteracts the centrifugal force preventing it to slide away towards the equator. This means that the vector term of the equation of motion above omega 2 r o r t plus 
f display style omega caret 2 bold symbol r underscore ort plus bold symbol f is directed straight down orthogonal to the surface of the earth the force affecting the motion of air sliding over the earth surface is therefore only the horizontal component of the coriolis term minus 2 omega times v display style minus 2 bold symbol omega times v this component is orthogonal to the velocity over the earth surface and is given by the expression omega v 2 sin phi display style omega v 2 sin phi where omega display style omega is the spin rate of the earth phi display style phi is the latitude positive in northern hemisphere and negative in the southern hemisphere and the northern hemisphere where the sign is positive this force acceleration as viewed from above is to the right of the direction of motion in the southern hemisphere where the sign is negative this force acceleration is to the left of the direction of motion topic intuitive explanation As the Earth turns around its axis, everything attached to it, including the atmosphere, turns with it imperceptibly to our senses. An object that is moving without being dragged along with the surface rotation or atmosphere such as an object in ballistic flight or an independent air mass within the atmosphere, travels in a straight motion over the turning Earth. From our rotating perspective on the planet, the direction of motion of an object in ballistic flight changes as it moves, bending in the opposite direction to our actual motion. When viewed from a stationary point in space directly above the North Pole, any land feature in the Northern Hemisphere turns anticlockwise, and, fixing our gaze on that location, any other location in that hemisphere rotates around it the same way. The traced ground path of a freely moving body in ballistic flight traveling from one point to another therefore bends the opposite way, clockwise, which is conventionally labeled as right, where it will be if the direction of motion is considered ahead and down is defined naturally. Topic. Rotating sphere. Consider a location with latitude phi on a sphere that is rotating around the north-south axis. A local coordinate system is set up with the x-axis horizontally due east, the y-axis horizontally due north and the z-axis vertically upwards. The rotation vector, velocity of movement and Coriolis acceleration expressed in this local coordinate system listing components in the order east e, north, n, and upward u, are omega equals omega zero cos phi sin phi Display style bold symbol omega equals omega begin p matrix zero cos var phi sin var phi end p matrix v equals v e v n v u Display style bold symbol V equals begin P matrix V underscore E V underscore N V underscore U and P matrix A C equals minus two Omega times V equals two Omega V N Sin Phi 
minus v u cos phi minus v e sin phi v e cos phi Display style bold symbol O underscore C equals minus two bold symbol Omega times V equals two Omega begin P matrix V underscore N sin var phi V underscore U cos var phi V underscore E sin var phi V underscore E cos var phi end P matrix when considering atmospheric or oceanic dynamics, the vertical velocity is small, and the vertical component of the Coriolis acceleration is small compared to gravity. For such cases, only the horizontal east and north components matter. The restriction of the above to the horizontal plane is setting v equals zero. V equals v e v n display style bold symbol v equals begin p matrix v underscore e v underscore n end p matrix a c equals v n minus v e f Display style bold symbol L underscore C equals begin P matrix V underscore N V underscore E end P matrix F where F equals two Omega Sin Phi Display style F equals two Omega Sin var phi is called the Coriolis parameter by setting V n topic zero. It can be seen immediately that for positive phi and omega, a movement due east results in an acceleration due south. Similarly, setting V Zero, it is seen that a movement due north results in an acceleration due east. In general, observed horizontally, looking along the direction of the movement causing the acceleration, the acceleration always is turned 90 degrees to the right and of the same size regardless of the horizontal orientation. As a different case, consider equatorial motion setting phi equals zero degrees. In this case, omega is parallel to the north or n axis, and omega equals omega zero one zero. Display style bold symbol omega equals omega begin p matrix zero one zero end p matrix v equals V E V N V U Display style bold symbol V equals begin P matrix V underscore E V underscore N V underscore U end P matrix A C equals minus two Omega times V equals two Omega minus V U zero V E Display style bold symbol L underscore C equals minus two bold symbol Omega times V equals two Omega begin P matrix V underscore U zero V underscore E end P matrix 
Accordingly, an eastward motion that is, in the same direction as the rotation of the sphere provides an upward acceleration known as the Eotivios effect, and an upward motion produces an acceleration due west. Topic. Meteorology Perhaps the most important impact of the Coriolis effect is in the large-scale dynamics of the oceans and the atmosphere. In meteorology and oceanography, it is convenient to postulate a rotating frame of reference wherein the Earth is stationary. In accommodation of that provisional postulation, the centrifugal and Coriolis forces are introduced. Their relative importance is determined by the applicable Rossby numbers. Tornadoes have high Rossby numbers, so, while tornado-associated centrifugal forces are quite substantial, Coriolis forces associated with tornadoes are for practical purposes negligible, because surface ocean currents are driven by the movement of wind over the water's surface. The Coriolis force also affects the movement of ocean currents and cyclones as well. Many of the ocean's largest currents circulate around warm, high-pressure areas called gyres. Though the circulation is not as significant as that in the air, the deflection caused by the Coriolis effect is what creates the spiraling pattern in these gyres. The spiraling wind pattern helps the hurricane form. The stronger the force from the Coriolis effect, the faster the wind spins and picks up additional energy, increasing the strength of the hurricane. Air within high pressure systems rotates in a direction such that the Coriolis force is directed radially inwards, and nearly balanced by the outwardly radial pressure gradient. As a result, air travels clockwise around high pressure in the northern hemisphere and anticlockwise in the southern hemisphere. Air around low pressure rotates in the opposite direction, so that the Coriolis force is directed radially outward and nearly balances an inwardly radial pressure gradient. Topic. Flow around a low pressure area If a low pressure area forms in the atmosphere, air tends to flow in towards it, but is deflected perpendicular to its velocity by the Coriolis force. A system of equilibrium can then establish itself creating circular movement, or a cyclonic flow. Because the Rossby number is low, the force balance is largely between the pressure gradient force acting towards the low pressure area and the Coriolis force acting away from the center of the low pressure. Instead of flowing down the gradient, large-scale motions in the atmosphere and ocean tend to occur perpendicular to the pressure gradient. This is known as geostrophic flow. On a non-rotating planet, fluid would flow along the straightest possible line, quickly eliminating pressure gradients. Note that the geostrophic balance is thus very different from the case of inertial motions. See below, which explains why mid-latitude cyclones are larger by an order of magnitude than inertial circle flow would be. This pattern of deflection, and the direction of movement, is called bayes ballet's law. In the atmosphere, the pattern of flow is called a cyclone. In the northern hemisphere the direction of movement around a low pressure area is anticlockwise. In the southern hemisphere, the direction of movement is clockwise because the rotational dynamics is a mirror image there. At high altitudes, outward spreading air rotates in the opposite direction. Cyclones rarely form along the equator due to the weak Coriolis effect present in this region. Topic. Inertial circles. An air or water mass moving with speed v display style v subject only to the Coriolis force travels in a circular trajectory called an inertial circle. Since the force is directed at right angles to the motion of the particle, it moves with a constant speed around a circle whose radius r display style r is given by r equals v f 
Display style R equals FRAC V F where F Display style F is the Coriolis parameter two Omega Sin Phi Display style two Omega Sin var phi introduced above where Phi Display style var phi is the latitude. The time taken for the mass to complete a full circle is therefore two pi f. Display style two pi f. The Coriolis parameter typically has a mid-latitude value of about 10 minus 4 s minus 1. Hence, for a typical atmospheric speed of 10 meters per second (22 miles per hour), the radius is 100 kilometers (62 miles) with a period of about 17 hours. For an ocean current with a typical speed of 10 centimeters per second (0.22 miles per hour), the radius of an inertial circle is 1 kilometer (0.6 miles). These inertial circles are clockwise in the northern hemisphere, where trajectories are bent to the right, and anticlockwise in the southern hemisphere. If the rotating system is a parabolic turntable, then f display style f is constant and the trajectories are exact circles on a rotating planet f display style f varies with latitude and the paths of particles do not form exact circles since the parameter f display style f varies as the sign of the latitude the radius of the oscillations associated with a given speed are smallest at the poles latitude equals plus or minus 90 degrees and increase toward the equator equals topic other terrestrial effects equals the Coriolis effect strongly affects the large-scale oceanic and atmospheric circulation, leading to the formation of robust features like jet streams and western boundary currents. Such features are in geostrophic balance, meaning that the Coriolis and pressure gradient forces balance each other. Coriolis acceleration is also responsible for the propagation of many types of waves in the ocean and atmosphere, including Rossby waves and Kelvin waves. It is also instrumental in the so-called Ekman dynamics in the ocean, and in the establishment of the large-scale ocean flow pattern called the Sverdrup balance. Equals. <laughs> Topic: EOTVO's effect. equals the practical impact of the Coriolis effect is mostly caused by the horizontal acceleration component produced by horizontal motion there are other components of the Coriolis effect westward traveling objects are deflected downwards feel heavier while eastward traveling objects are deflected upwards feel lighter this is known as the EOTVO's effect this aspect of the Coriolis effect is greatest near the equator. The force produced by this effect is similar to the horizontal component, but the much larger vertical forces due to gravity and pressure mean that it is generally unimportant dynamically. In addition, objects traveling upwards i.e., out or downwards i.e., in are deflected to the west or east respectively. This effect is also the greatest near the equator. Since vertical movement is usually of limited extent and duration, the size of the effect is smaller and requires precise instruments to detect. However, in the case of large changes of momentum, such as a spacecraft being launched into orbit, the effect becomes significant. The fastest and most fuel-efficient path to orbit is a launch from the equator that curves to a directly eastward heading. Topic. Intuitive example 
Imagine a train that travels through a frictionless railway line along the equator. Assume that, when in motion, it moves at the necessary speed to complete a trip around the world in one day 465 meters per second. The Coriolis effect can be considered in three cases, when the train travels west, when it is at rest, and when it travels east. In each case, the Coriolis effect can be calculated from the rotating frame of reference on Earth first, and then checked against a fixed inertial frame. The image below illustrates the three cases as viewed by an observer at rest in a near inertial frame from a fixed point above the North Pole along the Earth's axis of rotation. The train is denoted by a few red pixels, fixed at the left side in the leftmost picture, moving in the others. 1 day equals 8 s Display style one text day overset land equals eight text s one. The train travels toward the west. In that case, it moves against the direction of rotation. Therefore, on the Earth's rotating frame, the Coriolis term is pointed inwards towards the axis of rotation down. This additional force downwards should cause the train to be heavier while moving in that direction. If one looks at this train from the fixed non-rotating frame on top of the center of the Earth, at that speed it remains stationary as the Earth spins beneath it. Hence, the only force acting on it is gravity and the reaction from the track. This force is greater, by 0.34%, than the force that the passengers and the train experience when at rest rotating along with Earth. This difference is what the Coriolis effect accounts for in the rotating frame of reference. 2. The train comes to a stop. From the point of view on the Earth's rotating frame, the velocity of the train is zero, thus the Coriolis force is also zero and the train and its passengers recuperate their usual weight. From the fixed inertial frame of reference above Earth, the train now rotates along with the rest of the Earth. 0.34% of the force of gravity provides the centripetal force needed to achieve the circular motion on that frame of reference. The remaining force, as measured by a scale, makes the train and passengers lighter than in the previous case. 3. The train travels east. In this case, because it moves in the direction of Earth's rotating frame, the Coriolis term is directed outward from the axis of rotation up. This upward force makes the train seem lighter still than when at rest. From the fixed inertial frame of reference above Earth, the train traveling east now rotates at twice the rate as when it was at rest. So the amount of centripetal force needed to cause that circular path increases leaving less force from gravity to act on the track. This is what the Coriolis term accounts for on the previous paragraph. As a final check one can imagine a frame of reference rotating along with the train. Such frame would be rotating at twice the angular velocity as Earth's rotating frame. The resulting centrifugal force component for that imaginary frame would be greater. Since the train and its passengers are at rest, that would be the only component in that frame explaining again why the train and the passengers are lighter than in the previous two cases. This also explains why high-speed projectiles that travel west are deflected down, and those that travel east are deflected up. This vertical component of the Coriolis effect is called the Eotivios effect. The above example can be used to explain why the Eotivios effect starts diminishing when an object is traveling westward as its tangential speed increases above Earth's rotation 465 meters per second. If the westward train in the above example increases speed, part of the force of gravity that pushes against the track accounts for the centripetal force needed to keep it in circular motion on the inertial frame. Once the train doubles its westward speed at 930 meters per second that centripetal force becomes equal to the force the train experiences when it stops. From the inertial frame, in both cases it rotates at the same speed but in the opposite directions. Thus, the force is the same cancelling completely the Eotivios effect. 
Any object that moves westward at a speed above 930 meters per second experiences an upward force instead. In the figure, the EOTVO's effect is illustrated for a 10 kg object on the train at different speeds. The parabolic shape is because the centripetal force is proportional to the square of the tangential speed. On the inertial frame, the bottom of the parabola is centered at the origin. The offset is because this argument uses the Earth's rotating frame of reference. The graph shows that the EODVO's effect is not symmetrical, and that the resulting downward force experienced by an object that travels west at high velocity is less than the resulting upward force when it travels east at the same speed. Topic. Draining in bathtubs and toilets Contrary to popular misconception, water rotation in home bathrooms under normal circumstances is not related to the Coriolis effect, or to the rotation of the Earth, and no consistent difference in rotation direction between toilet drainage in the northern and southern hemispheres can be observed. The formation of a vortex over the plug hole may be explained by the conservation of angular momentum. The radius of rotation decreases as water approaches the plug hole, so the rate of rotation increases, for the same reason that an ice skater's rate of spin increases as they pull their arms in. Any rotation around the plug hole that is initially present accelerates as water moves inward. The Coriolis force still affects the direction of the flow of water, but only minutely. Only if the water is so still that the effective rotation rate of the Earth is faster than that of the water relative to its container, and if externally applied torques such as might be caused by flow over an uneven bottom surface are small enough, the Coriolis effect may indeed determine the direction of the vortex. Without such careful preparation, the Coriolis effect is likely to be much smaller than various other influences on drain direction such as any residual rotation of the water and the geometry of the container. Despite this, the idea that toilets and bathtubs drain differently in the northern and southern hemispheres has been popularized by several television programs and films, including Escape Plan, Wedding Crashers, The Simpsons Episode. Bart vs. Australia, Pole to Pole, and the X-Files episode, Die Hand Die Verletzt. Several science broadcasts and publications, including at least one college-level physics textbook, have also stated this. In 1908, the Austrian physicist Ottokar Tumblers described careful and effective experiments that demonstrated the effect of the rotation of the Earth on the outflow of water through a central aperture. The subject was later popularized in a famous 1962 article in the journal Nature, which described an experiment in which all other forces to the system were removed by filling a 6 feet 1.8 meters tank with 300 U.S. gal 1,100 L of water and allowing it to settle for 24 hours to allow any movement due to filling the tank to die away, in a room where the temperature had stabilized. The drain plug was then very slowly removed, and tiny pieces of floating wood were used to observe rotation. During the first 12 to 15 minutes, no rotation was observed. Then, a vortex appeared and consistently began to rotate in an anticlockwise direction. The experiment was performed in Boston, Massachusetts, in the Northern Hemisphere. This was repeated and the results averaged to make sure the effect was real. The report noted that the vortex rotated about 30,000 times faster than the effective rotation of the Earth in 42 degrees north, the experiment's location. This shows that the small initial rotation due to the Earth is amplified by gravitational draining and conservation of angular momentum to become a rapid vortex and may be observed under carefully controlled laboratory conditions. Topic. Ballistic trajectories The Coriolis force is important in external ballistics for calculating the trajectories of very long-range artillery shells. 
The most famous historical example was the Paris gun, used by the Germans during World War I to bombard Paris from a range of about 120 kilometers, 75 miles. The Coriolis force minutely changes the trajectory of a bullet, affecting accuracy at extremely long distances. It is adjusted for by accurate long-distance shooters, such as snipers. At the latitude of Sacramento a 1,000-yard shot would be deflected 3 inches to the right. There is also a vertical component, explained in the EOTVO's effect section above, which causes westward shots to hit low, and eastward shots to hit high. The effects of the Coriolis force on ballistic trajectories should not be confused with the curvature of the paths of missiles, satellites, and similar objects when the paths are plotted on two-dimensional flat maps, such as the Mercator projection. The projections of the three-dimensional curved surface of the Earth to a two-dimensional surface the map necessarily results in distorted features. The apparent curvature of the path is a consequence of the sphericity of the Earth and would occur even in a non-rotating frame. Topic. Visualization of the Coriolis effect To demonstrate the Coriolis effect, a parabolic turntable can be used. On a flat turntable, the inertia of a co-rotating object forces it off the edge. However, if the turntable surface has the correct paraboloid parabolic bowl shape see the figure, and rotates at the corresponding rate, the force components shown in the figure make the component of gravity tangential to the bowl surface exactly equal to the centripetal force necessary to keep the object rotating at its velocity and radius of curvature, assuming no friction. See Banked Turn this carefully contoured surface allows the Coriolis force to be displayed in isolation. Discs cut from cylinders of dry ice can be used as pucks, moving around almost frictionlessly over the surface of the parabolic turntable, allowing effects of Coriolis on dynamic phenomena to show themselves. To get a view of the motions as seen from the reference frame rotating with the turntable, a video camera is attached to the turntable so as to co-rotate with the turntable, with results as shown in the figure. In the left panel of the figure, which is the viewpoint of a stationary observer, the gravitational force in the inertial frame pulling the object toward the center, bottom, of the dish is proportional to the distance of the object from the center. A centripetal force of this form causes the elliptical motion. In the right panel, which shows the viewpoint of the rotating frame, the inward gravitational force in the rotating frame the same force as in the inertial frame is balanced by the outward centrifugal force present only in the rotating frame. With these two forces balanced, in the rotating frame the only unbalanced force is Coriolis also present only in the rotating frame, and the motion is an inertial circle. Analysis and observation of circular motion in the rotating frame is a simplification compared to analysis or observation of elliptical motion in the inertial frame. Because this reference frame rotates several times a minute rather than only once a day like the Earth, the Coriolis acceleration produced is many times larger and so easier to observe on small time and spatial scales than is the Coriolis acceleration caused by the rotation of the Earth. In a manner of speaking, the Earth is analogous to such a turntable. The rotation has caused the planet to settle on a spheroid shape, such that the normal force, the gravitational force and the centrifugal force exactly balance each other on a horizontal surface. See equatorial bulge. The Coriolis effect caused by the rotation of the Earth can be seen indirectly through the motion of a Foucault pendulum. Topic. Coriolis effects in other areas Topic. Coriolis flow meter A practical application of the Coriolis effect is the mass flow meter, an instrument that measures the mass flow rate and density of a fluid flowing through a tube. 
The operating principle involves inducing a vibration of the tube through which the fluid passes. The vibration, though not completely circular, provides the rotating reference frame that gives rise to the Coriolis effect. While specific methods vary according to the design of the flow meter, sensors monitor and analyze changes in frequency, phase shift, and amplitude of the vibrating flow tubes. The changes observed represent the mass flow rate and density of the fluid. Topic. Molecular physics In polyatomic molecules, the molecule motion can be described by a rigid body rotation and internal vibration of atoms about their equilibrium position. As a result of the vibrations of the atoms, the atoms are in motion relative to the rotating coordinate system of the molecule. Coriolis effects are therefore present, and make the atoms move in a direction perpendicular to the original oscillations. This leads to a mixing in molecular spectra between the rotational and vibrational levels, from which Coriolis coupling constants can be determined. Topic. Gyroscopic precession When an external torque is applied to a spinning gyroscope along an axis that is at right angles to the spin axis, the rim velocity that is associated with the spin becomes radially directed in relation to the external torque axis. This causes a Coriolis force to act on the rim in such a way as to tilt the gyroscope at right angles to the direction that the external torque would have tilted it. This tendency has the effect of keeping spinning bodies stably aligned in space. Topic. Insect flight Flies diptera, and some moths lepidoptera, exploit the Coriolis effect in flight with specialized appendages and organs that relay information about the angular velocity of their bodies. Coriolis forces resulting from linear motion of these appendages are detected within the rotating frame of reference of the insect's bodies. In the case of flies, their specialized appendages are dumbbell-shaped organs located just behind their wings called haltiers. The fly's haltiers oscillate in a plane at the same beat frequency as the main wing so that any body rotation results in lateral deviation of the haltiers from their plane of motion. In moths, their antennae are known to be responsible for the sensing of Coriolis forces in the similar manner as with the haltiers in flies. In both flies and moths, a collection of mechanosensors at the base of the appendage are sensitive to deviations at the beat frequency, correlating to rotation in the pitch and roll planes, and at twice the beat frequency, correlating to rotation in the yaw plane. Topic. Lagrangian point stability In astronomy, Lagrangian points are five positions in the orbital plane of two large orbiting bodies where a small object affected only by gravity can maintain a stable position relative to the two large bodies. The first three Lagrangian points L1, L2, L3 lie along the line connecting the two large bodies, while the last two points L4 and L5 each form an equilateral triangle with the two large bodies. The L4 and L5 points, although they correspond to maxima of the effective potential in the coordinate frame that rotates with the two large bodies, are stable due to the Coriolis effect. The stability can result in orbits around just L4 or L5, known as tadpole orbits, where trojans can be found. It can also result in orbits that encircle L3, L4, and L5, known as horseshoe orbits. Topic. See also equals equals notes.